How to put together and maintain a marketing funnel with Rainmaker Platform. I'm answering Fred Schenkelberg's question. Thanks, Fred, for asking. It took me a few months, actually, um, to put together my answer. And I got to be honest, I couldn't really release the answer to this question until the latest update of Rainmaker Platform had come out. 2.7 dropped yesterday, and that really made it a lot easier as far as my answer. So let's get right into it. All right, so let's define marketing funnel to begin with, and I'm telling you how I define it. So I just, I keep try and keep it as simple as possible. You're gonna get the attention of people, that's the awareness portion, then your the threshold is to move from awareness to email and that's where the threshold is them introducing themselves to your business by creating an account with your website they're introducing themselves giving you their name as well as their email address this isn't some number and this is a human being that you've attracted to you know want to know more about your business to have a deeper conversation with you you move them into email and the whole point of that is to allow your brand to get to know them and put them in the buying frame of mind buying frame of mind could be them moving on it could be them you know moving forward with you you're not your solution is not for everyone don't pretend like it needs to be don't it don't have those expectations obviously the whole goal of the email portion is to get them into to educate their decision so they make a decision we move them from awareness to email and into customer and then at that point the first key goal is to onboard them don't leave it up to chance oh well it's real simple they'll figure it out on their own no you want a regimented process that is going to be delivered by email because that's it's going to be great for mobile. If they want to check their email on their mobile, no problem. If they want to go to the website, no problem. If they want to watch a video, no problem. Doesn't matter what screen. All you're asking them to do is pick a screen, get an internet connection, and interact with you, either from email, from your website, whatever. Put together. It, I know it sounds like I'm being, you know, sarcastic or whatever but I'm really not put together I just wanted to be real clear about you know because those were the these are the phrases these are the words that Fred asked the question in and I was really curious about okay well what exactly were the connotations for that so you know how understanding the connotations understanding the context understanding that definition allows me to hopefully better answer the question on first step so put together is to build assemble create makes sense right so what I wanted to do was bring together the needed Rainmaker platform components in order to educate your customers movement it's all about movement they're either moving forward or they're moving on one way you know to somewhere else because the point is, you're not looking for everyone to just be stagnant. Now, understand that some people, is, you know, they, they have different time frames. It's going to take some people longer than others, some people less time than others. Doesn't matter. You're still educating them till they're ready to make their decision. And But that's the whole point of the email side, is to educate their decision. So... And then obviously when they're ready, they become a customer. The education doesn't stop there. It's it's really kicks into high gear because now you're onboarding them so that they understand how to get every drop of value from your service or your product. Okay, so we start with awareness content. This is where you're gaining attention. And this is what everybody wants to talk about. Any business owner that I talk to, they talk about attention. And they, they need to awareness. We need more awareness, more awareness. And, you know, how can you do that? Well, blog posts, podcast episodes, the course lessons, case studies, vlog entries, like this guy, any number of options. The key here is to show up consistently and to do the best possible content that you can. Understand, you can't, ow, my cat provider is awfully rude. Number one is be consistent, but number two is to do the best possible content that you can from the customer's perspective, not from your perspective. What you want to do is accommodate your customer with this awareness content. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. You've heard that, right? Same thing with your business with the content. So make sure that it's consistent. Make sure that it is the best possible that you can do, but understand you can't improve until you do. Until you start moving, 
you can't, there can't be any improvement. Like I'm really, 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 really um, self-conscious of my video skills. Putting me on camera all the time to start with freaks me out, you know, because I, I hate looking at myself on TV. I hate listening to myself. But if I can make myself, you know, make this package halfway palatable to people, then I'm hoping that they'll be able to say, you know, kind of see it. Okay, well, if he can make that look okay, he can make me look really, really good because I'm way more talented than this cracker. And it's true, you probably are, you know, but as far as to be an executive producer and for what I'm looking to accomplish, I have to be able to show you that I understand what you're going through as I'm working you through um, putting together your funnel, using video to, you know, do content marketing for your business so that you're growing your business long term. So one call to action the goal across the board for this funnel is any associated piece of attraction content is going to bear a single a single call to action which sends them back to it's a clickable button or a clickable link but ideally a clickable button that is linked to a sign up landing page okay so the idea is that this is the page that you're going to get them to sign up to introduce themselves to create their account with your business website. Now, it doesn't matter what type of content or whatever that you choose, you always want that single clear call to action linking to one landing page for one offer. So for instance, on jasonobsllc.com, as I go through and set this up in the coming days, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a sign up page. Well, there actually is a sign up page now, but the video and the message of it and all that is going to change over the coming days, as well as the pieces behind it that you know, carry the experience forward. Because what I'm focusing on is that I'm gonna to put together a course and it's going to help you put together your own um, marketing funnel for your business. The, the idea, understanding that we're defining the marketing funnel to take them from awareness to your email to customer. So in the, you can get real technical and quote unquote, yes, I am simplifying a lot of stuff, but you don't need, you're not a marketer, you're a business owner. What you need is something that's going to help you move the ball down the field, that's going to help you move closer to your goal. On my website, Jason LLC, the sign up page, it's going, the primary reason for signing up is gonna be this free email course that I'm walking them through. Now understand that each of these emails is going to be comprised of the headline and then an image linking back and maybe some text with the call to action, but all the links go back to one page on my website. And it's going to be within the learning management system or LMS of Rainmaker platform. And I'm gonna walk them through each of these lessons. So what the way I've set it up in Rainmaker is I created one course and there are three or five or however many lessons it works out to to answer the question and that's all the course name is is here's the question that we're answering with this and then here's the sequence of lessons and then i'm delivering quote unquote delivering them using an autoresponder sequence that i've already set up so as soon as they sign up for this free product on this sign up page then they automatically get added to this uh, autoresponder sequence that's going to give them the lessons, drip out the lessons over the coming days. And then also it's going to, I'm going to add them to my ongoing list. And obviously I'm making it clear to them up front, like on the sign up page, there's gonna be two pieces. Number one, you're going to get instant access to my course answering this question using this many lessons, basically. And then the second thing is you're going to be added to my overall list so that once a week you're going to receive an email update from me. The idea is that this is our ongoing conversation. So I'm not doing a specific format, at least not to start. I'm going to try different formats and see which one works the best for the audience that I put together. So the whole point is, I don't want it to be, it's not gonna take a bunch of your time up if you decide to open the email and read it. And it's going to offer 
a next step if that first piece is enough to make you say, well, yeah, I want more, then you'll have that opportunity and that'll be the sole call to action in each of the emails. Okay, so I'm, I show an example and what I wanted to do was make it real clear how each of these pieces works. You can head over to, excuse me, you can head over to copyblogger.com and see you know, as far as this example. So the button links to a landing page which has the sign up form on it. And the sign up form is for a free product that also adds you to an autoresponder sequence. The landing page, the headline and the call to action, the button below that headline that they click on that brings them to this page, they all work together. They're a bridge for that customer. So they don't feel weird or, oh, I'm on the wrong, did I go to the wrong place? Or, you know, just a complete disconnect because that'll make people leave. So this is a bridge and then down below that headline is where the create account form is and the create account button is the threshold between them being in awareness or being aware of you and joining your email. Once they decide to join your email, this is about keeping attention and this is the most important mechanism in my very humble estimation. As a business owner, Getting attention is great. Having a mechanism in place, a process, a system, whatever you want to call it, that is in place, that's standing at the ready, so to speak. So as soon as you get their attention and they decide that they want more, you're able to keep that attention. If they want to take the relationship to another level, then by all means, be ready and you know willing and able, like you know, empower or enable that action from them right so the goal of this emails isn't to just you know you're not spamming them obviously but on top of that your goal isn't just to do a bunch of promotion about you and so forth it's to learn more about them their needs as a customer the problems that they're facing the the phrases the the terms etc that they use that you know to kind of describe stuff that's all information that you want to reflect into your marketing copy going forward Forward. like you want everything to be iterative and educate their decision look at it that way you're not making the decision for them you're giving them the relevant information that they need to make a decision for them for their unique context you want to accommodate their time frame different strokes for different folks I mean everyone's going to take a different amount of time to arrive at a decision and understand I make it sound like it's all rational and so forth most of the time it's not <laughs> like we are not humans are not rational beings and let's be very clear you're always doing business with another human there's always you're a human and there's always going to be a human on the other side of any transaction that your business does, be it a free transaction where they become part of your email or obviously, you know, and obviously, um, you know, paid ones where they become a customer, right? So understand that, like, we're not rational beings. W one thing that a lot of us do is we'll make a decision based on whatever we decide. <laughs> like, it could be, you know, just a quick a spur of the moment decision in a lot of cases, but then what we're going to do is, as we consume additional information, we're going to use it to justify our decision. So just keep that in mind. You're educating their decision and you're accommodating their time frame. All right, email number one, this is a really big one. That's why I made the text so large. <laughs> um, okay, you wanna ask a question and you'll see on the slide, I gave an image credit because that is an image there that I took from that blog post on Drift. So the point of that first email is to get a reply and to make it about something that's important, that's pertinent to your relationship. Next is that three to five email autoresponder sequence and the course that this autoresponder teaches, the, the question that that course answers is the reason that they decided to sign up in the first place in a lot of cases, right? Because it's kind of, you're doing all this awareness content and the next step is this three to five email autoresponder sequence. So as soon as they sign up on the sign up page, they are added to this autoresponder sequence. And it every single one is just focused on, it's not giving you everything in it, it's driving them back to your website to watch the video. You're getting them into a routine of going to your website, logging in and getting some goodies, so to speak. Or going to your website, watching the video and to get additional goodies 
then they log in. However you wanna set it up, obviously it's going to be different in each individual context. But the cool part is that you have a choice and you have the capability. All right, once a week also, there. see that's kind of the pitch is, number one on that sign up page, pitch part one is you're gonna get access to this awesome course sent by email, answering this specific question that's relevant and pertinent to you. And number two, you're going to be part of the conversation week in and week out as the broadcast emails are sent out once a week where it's just your conversation with your customers. Don't worry about you know having to kill them with all the information at once. You're opening a line of communication between your business and your customers through this weekly email. And that's a great thing. I don't care if you're a restaurant, an accountant, it doesn't matter. If you have an open line of communication with your customers where you control the line of communication because it's through your website that you own and you own all the content, et cetera, that is a business asset. Once they do make a decision, see, and that's one thing that I like to do is the three to five email sequence, that course, at the end of it, you're going to introduce the, the opportunity to take another step, which is to become a customer, right? And it's just the natural progression, ideally, of here's the next step that you're going to want to take. And what it's going to do is link to a sales landing page for that paid product, that natural next step in their relationship with you and them. Now, understand, they may say no at the time. They may not, they, now, and no can be two different things. It's, there's, a good portion of it is, you know, just no, you're not for everybody. They're leaving to go find something else. Fine. But there's other no's that you want to continue that conversation and they want to continue the conversation because they just aren't ready to say no right now. So, and that's why that ongoing week to week allows you with, you know, because obviously you're also creating additional content each week and which is further educating their decision in a dip on top of what you taught them in that three to five part course where they said no at the end of it, right? But you'll do other stuff in the future where they're going to get another opportunity to make a decision. And maybe three months later, they're ready to say yes. Maybe not. Maybe it's six months later that they're ready to say yes. You don't want to run them off. It doesn't cost you a ton of money to keep that conversation going. So that's where the open line of communication that you're creating is, that's why it's so important. So, and the, here's the other thing that everybody just misses in my humble estimation, or not everybody, but a lot of people. So once they become a customer, the that's the next level to the relationship, right? So you guys were strangers, you, you found out about each other, they introduced themselves formally to you, crossed the threshold into, from awareness to email. Now they're crossing another threshold to go from email to, with an open line of communication, to a paying customer, right? So the sale is just the start. Like, that's the worst thing that you can do is just, Take their money and run, obviously, is the worst thing you could do. But the another, just almost as bad, is to not help them get every drop of value out of your offering. Because if they don't get every drop of value, they're less likely to tell friends about it and you know become a brand ambassador and a repeat customer and you know so forth, right? So you want to hedge your bets and say, okay, well, I'm gonna make sure that everyone that does buy, they get everything from it humanly possible because I am doing everything possible to make that happen for them. I'm helping, you know, hold their hand as much as possible or carry them when needed, you know, to go make sure that they continue moving forward, right? And that's the onboard. Autoresponder email sequence, it's time from the purchase timestamp. So you're able to say, you know, one hour after purchase, you know, seven days after purchase, 30 days after purchase, et cetera. And you're able to put these emails together in understanding in context of they bought on this date, what do they need to know at this point, right? And it's all educational, it's informing them. So you're helping them continue to move forward by bringing, because they, you know, with most places that I talk to, they have so much that they offer, right? They have so many different things that they can do. and 
they want to just you know drown people basically in that and immediately and when they do that they're really shooting themselves in the foot because they don't need to consume everything at once they need to know about what they need to know about on day one and then on day two what do they need to know that day and then day three and day, you know and then day 30 they're going to need to know about this other stuff you know what i mean so you're taking all of those pieces it's kind of like the old saying you know what's the easiest way to to eat an elephant one bite at a time right so just you put it into bites for them and be there as their be attentive as they move forward so here's the second part to his question which you know once i kind of got in and, and did a little did kind of got specific so to speak where i was defining the words and the phrases and so forth i realized that it was a good idea because maintain is preserve or keep unimpaired. So the idea is that you want to iterate over time and improve your funnel, right? So what we're going to start with is by A-B testing the thresholds. What are the thresholds? Well, those are the sign up landing page and the sales landing page that you put together, you know, free product and paid product. And those are the, the thresholds between going from awareness to email and then going from email over to customer, right? So and you want to just continue to improve those because that's the message. You know, here's why you want to take the next step and come into my you know email conversation. Here's why you're ready to, you want to become a customer because it's always in their best interest, right? As far as or it's not. If it's not in their best interest, they're going to say no and move on, or they're going to say yes and create a bunch of pain for you going forward because it wasn't the right solution. So you want to move them between awareness and email, and you want to move them between email and customer. And then obviously you're looking to take them to repeat customer or brand ambassador and you know so forth. It doesn't stop there is my point, even though we're not discussing all of it today. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I use Hotjar, and obviously this is outside of Rainmaker, but I really like Hotjar because on those either checkout pages, sign up pages, success pages, as far as, you know, because each time that they complete a sign up, you want to put them on a success page and Rainmaker can do, you know, specific tagging there and so forth. But what I like to do is I like to set up the funnel as far as in Hotjar so that it can let me know where am I losing people. And then I also like to put polls in. They ask different questions as well that I put into my onboarding email sequence. Uh, the whole point is you want to open a conversation, a line of communication, and I use Hotjar to kind of facilitate that in addition to Rainmaker and to kind of track success because one way that the only way you're going to be able to maintain it and improve it over time is if you're aware of you have the necessary information, right? You can just because you make decisions consistently, if, if you're never learning anything and it's not based on actual experience, you're going to have less success than the person that is making, you know, improving their decision making process by collecting data, analyzing it, understanding it within context, and then but always understanding that. It's all built around your customer. It's a customer centric approach that we're using, you know, in this strategy as far as to create this funnel. It's, it's not a, let me cram it down your throat and talk you into it and then take your money and run type of thing. This is, that's a one off transaction. That's like the one night stand. This is a marriage that we're talking about and you don't enter into a marriage, um, you know, with your eyes closed, hopefully, right? But that's the point. It's a long-term relationship. That's why you're opening this line of communication and you're keeping it consistent day in, day out, week in, week out, and you're making sure that you're doing your best possible content each time you create awareness content. You're always doing your best. You're striving for perfection, even though you know that you're not going to be able to do it with your content. The idea is that I'm putting together the answer. I'm then going to test the answer by applying it to jasonhobbsllc.com because let's be honest my funnel is a sieve 
like for Jason Hobbs LLC. And it has been for so long as I pivoted, as I taught myself what I needed to. And, you know, I had some customers that kind of, in spite of my effort, <laughs> I was still able to work with. The idea is let's put this answer together and then let's test the answer so that we can then iterate the answer to hopefully improve it, right? Or at least to say, hey, if you need to see an example, here's an example. And then my goal is to apply this to different specific industries. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, you're still going to want to set up your own marketing fund.